guys, it's Ronnie here from Southern Food Junkie. Today we had AJ Bush and Company Visitor Center right outside of Dandridge, Tennessee. Uh, they call this little area Chestnut Hill. And we're gonna give you a little tour of it. We're on our anniversary trip, and uh, this will be a separate video for uh, for the tour of this. So we'll see y'all in a second. Out here at the visitor center, they actually have a little cafe here where you can eat. It all starts with beans, grown by farmers in places like North Dakota and Michigan that are shipped to us here in Chestnut Hill. See that guy spilling the beans? He's filling up a silo with navy beans. We'll run through that in about two to three days. Other beans, like kidney beans and black beans, come in huge sacks that hold a ton of beans, and we keep them stored in this warehouse. The first step in canning is to soak the beans. We move the beans along a shaker conveyor to the soap tank. We put about 7,000 pounds of beans into each tank. We let them soak, and when they get fully rehydrated, they double in weight and they double in size. So we end up with about 14,000 pounds of beans in each tank when fully soaked. Next, the beans drop down out of the bottom of the tank and are on their way to be washed and cleaned. We spend a lot of time and effort washing and cleaning the beans but we do it very gently. Once the beans are soaked and washed, the next step is to blanch them. We heat the beans, and this conditions the bean for canning. In other words, it allows the beans to take on the color, the flavor of the sauce. Blanching also makes them a little bit easier to digest. The next step is the secret sauce preparation. We use pure sugar and truckloads of pure molasses, and we make our own brown sugar right on site. Despite all the technology, some of the process is low tech. We still hand mix a lot of our spices. These are spice slurry tanks. Try saying that 10 times real fast. This is where the different spices are mixed. In the center of the room are the mixing bowls, where the sauce is mixed. We pump the different ingredients into those bowls and stir it right up. Now this is tomato paste. There's about a ton of paste in that container and the operator is preparing to empty it. That hydraulic arm will pick up the ton of tomato paste and dump it out into the hopper. And then it's moved out into a tank. That's where it's mixed and thinned down to the density necessary for the recipe. When a sauce tank or a sauce bowl needs tomato paste, it will send a signal to a controller and the paste will be pumped in to mix with the other ingredients. And this is the production floor. The beans come in hot from one side, and the sauce comes in hot from the other side. So we need something to put them in, and that's where the can comes in. The cans are made right down the road, 
and they're delivered to us in these roller bed trailers. Now watch this. This is pretty cool. All our operator has to do is flip one switch and the entire truck unloads automatically in just a couple of minutes. A trolley car runs back and forth and picks up two pallets of cans at a time. This meat machine is called a depalletizer. The cans are automatically unloaded from the pallets and sent in single file to be washed and then filled. Now, I told you this place has some unique features. See those large windows? That's something you don't find in most manufacturing plants. We wanted to use a lot of natural light. It creates a good working environment. So anywhere on the production floor, no matter where we're working, we can see outside. Believe me, it makes a huge difference. Next, the sanitized cans are delivered to the production floor. The first ingredient to go into the empty can is the bacon. We buy it in large blocks, cut the blocks into strips that are cubed and dropped into the can. Studies show that 98% of you really want that bacon in there. But you know what? We ask you what you do with it, and 96% of you throw it away. Hmm. Then a filling machine measures out the number of ounces that goes into each either. can of beans. The cans come along underneath the filling machine, and the beans drop in the can. Now this machine runs extremely fast, so we'll slow it down for you so you can see it. Once the beans are in the can, they go to the overflow grinder where the cans are filled with a waterfall of salt. Next, we put a lid on it. Cans on the right are going in without a lid. And cans on the left are coming out with a lid. Cans are then high pressure washed to get the sauce off the side of the can. And then we turn them upside down. That's for two reasons. The first reason is it allows the beans to flow down through the sauce before it gets to the cooker. The second reason is it positions the can so we can put our product coat on it. We track every can to the minute it was produced. And from that minute, we know everybody that worked on it and we know where all the ingredients came from. And every few minutes, we do quality checks throughout the process. We pull cans off the line and everything has to meet our standards or out it goes. Remember, integrity, responsibility, trust, and care are our core values. We spend a lot of time on food safety and food quality. Now, we cook the beans according to our secret family recipe. The temperature at which we cook our product will kill any bacteria that can make a human sick. That's the reason canned foods are so safe. And you know our beans are pretty tasty right out of the can. Feel free to just open them up and grab a spoon. Mm. Mm. We won't tell anybody. Back to cooking. Our cookers are nine stories tall. You can see the tower sticking up at the end of our plant. Once they come out of the cooker, they're on their way to the warehouse. Bright stack is a term that we use here at Bush Brothers to describe a can of finished product without the label. We incubate our product for about seven days in our bright stack warehouse before we label it and ship it out. These are our forklift operators. You've got to see these guys at work. They're artists at stacking things. With that fourth pallet on there, he's got a load that's about 22 feet in the air. We're almost to the end of the canning process. The last thing we do is add the Bush Brothers label. This machine rolls the cans through, applying glue strips to the can, and then wrapping it up with the paper label. Electronic eyes check the can, and if the label didn't stick or went on crooked, it'll kick that can out and send it back around to be relabeled. This high-speed line can label more than a thousand cans a minute. See if you can take it sticking out to this label can. We'll slow it down for you. They're ready to be sent out into the world. We gather them into cases of 12, and then a tray slides in, and it's actually formed underneath the can. Then we shrink wrap every case to keep the cans clean, but it also stabilizes them for shipping. And here comes my favorite part. This is the palletizing machine. It stacks up those cases like bricks, changing the orientation of the cans for stability. Once the pallet gets wrapped, it leaves the cage and the barcode is pasted on the side of the pallet. Next, our forklift operators will pick it up and take it to the warehouse. All the forklifts are equipped with a scanner 
and use a radio frequency to relay inventory information to a central computer. The operator will scan the barcode, it'll tell them what the product is and where to take it in the warehouse. And when sales orders come in, the system will tell the forklift operator where in the warehouse that product is stored. From there, we ship beans all over the world. And some of them end up on the shelves at your local grocery store. Check my bean weight. Hmm. I bet my friend Abby, aka I like would know this stuff. She likes turquoise. No, one. Get that old bread box.